Welcome back to an episode on how to hack. And today we'll be learning about how we can break into user account inside a website and then retrieving their passwords. So right in front of us, I actually have open web application security project juice shop running. So this is a vulnerable web application system for us to run all of our hacking techniques on, particularly in the A-Real, a web application penetration testing. So what we can do now is to go into the top right corner and we can see under account. So go ahead and click login. So let's say you're on a website and of course you have the registration page and you can log into your own account, but that's not the whole idea of what we're trying to do here. So instead, what I can do is to go to the top right corner, click on the Foxy proxy and click on the Burp Suite. So Burp Suite is going to intercept all of the requests that we're sending over to the web application system and after which we can run a brute force attack to check for vulnerabilities on the login screen. So I'll go ahead and open up Terminal. All right, so I'll open up terminal here. And what I can do now is go ahead and enter burp suite. All right, and we can run this immediately. So now I have burp suite community edition, select temporary project, click next, click start burp. So now we have burp suite community edition running, go to the proxy tab and ensure the intercept is on. Okay, so go back to OWASP juice shop. I'll just enter something for the email, enter some password and go ahead and click login. And of course, right here, all right, I can go ahead and take a look here. Okay, so we got post, RAS user login, HTTP 1.1. So right at the bottom, you can see here in the body, we have email, ASD, as well as password as ASD. So this is the content, all right, the body parameters and the value that we're sending over into the web application system, okay? And of course, here we have cookie. So all these are also important information for us to save and use as part of ensuring that we have the same session. So do a right click anywhere inside Burp Suite and click under send to intruder. Okay. And you see intruder blinking right here. So go ahead and click on the tab intruder. So here we have the target IP address. In this case, target IP address can be a domain name, can be an IP address. In our case, we're using an IP address. And of course, we specify the port. Okay. So of course, in the real world, you'll be using HTTPS to run all these attacks because pretty much all websites are already on HTTPS. So click on the positions. And this is the part where it gets really interesting, okay? So go and select the whole of the cookie, okay? And we'll clear this. And we are only left with the bottom two, which is the email as well as the password. So this is the two fields that we will be injecting our payloads into. And you can click on the payloads tab, all right? And this is the part where we want to load our list of payloads. So go in and click load. And in my case, I'm going to select SQL.txt. So you can see from the word list here, we have injections, we have root, USR, share, word list, WFUS, injections. Okay, so make sure you're on an injection directory. And right here, I'll go ahead and select SQL, SQL, structured query language. Double click on it, and we'll load up the payload options for us over here. So we got a lot of options. Okay, we got a lot of payloads, a lot of options for us to go and inject a simple list into the website. So once you're done, all you got to do is go to the top right corner. You see this button right here, start attack go ahead and click on it. So in three, two, one, we'll click start attack. And because this is a community edition, we of course get the time throttle. Okay, so go ahead and click okay. And that will start up the intruder attack one as you can see right here. So this is a new dialog box for us to see what's going on. So you can see here we have several columns. Okay, so we have the request number, we have the position. Okay, so it's targeting a position one, and we have the payload. So payload is the the bad information, right? The bad values that we're trying to send over into the website and see what is going on. And of course, one really important thing to think about when crafting our payloads is what kind of payloads are you sending over the server and what kind of responses are you getting back? And this is really important because whatever we're sending over right now, we want to know how is the server responding to our payloads, All right? So going back into the demo here, you can see that we have the following. We have status 401, status 500. Okay, so my question back to you before I explain any of them, what do all these stats mean? What does it mean for us as penetration testers and ethical hackers? Okay, so I can go ahead and sort the status and I can go ahead and click pause here because we got a really important status and this is status 200. What does that mean? 
it means that we have success. So let's go ahead and double click on it. And we got the result here. Okay, so this is the request. So this is what we're sending over into the site. And we have the payload right here. Okay, admin, single quote, and double dash. And of course, we can take a look at the response. And in the response field, we have the following. Okay, so we have been issued an authentication token. And we have the BID and we have the email, which is admin. So what we can do now is with all these details, with the payload, we can easily just copy the payload. So I'll go ahead and copy it by using a shortcut on my keyboard. So I'll copy it and I go back to Firefox and I can turn off the Foxy proxy. So let's go ahead and turn it off. And all I got to do now is just paste the payload that we have just crafted and we've sent it over to the website and we got a response 200, which means success. So go ahead and click login and that's it. We are in. Okay, we are in. And I can see right here on the account, admin, go ahead and click on it. And we can see email as admin. We can see the user profile. And of course, you see CSRF. So I was doing some cross-site request forgery earlier. So if you have not yet checked the tutorial, all right, go ahead and click and subscribe to the channel. And you see the video right there, okay? It's a video right before it is. So this is not where we're stopping at. What we're trying to do is to know exactly what is the password field and in this case if i go back into the result here and we have the following okay so we have the authentication and this is the part where it gets really exciting because all i got to do now is copy the token i copy the whole of the token and i'll go back to burp suite and there is a tab called decoder right so go ahead and go under decoder and i'll paste it right here Okay, and we can see the following information and so on and so forth at the top okay so i'll remove the bid 18 so let's go ahead and remove that. We move the double code. And right over here, okay, we have some gibberish text. So we have no idea what it is. So what does it do? All right, so we can decode as base64 and we can click on text. So this is the decoded part. And what's happening here is that this is a web token. All right, so this is a web token and we managed to look into the content of it because what happened is that some of these authentication systems, authorization systems, they may save a copy of a lot of your user data and attributes into the client side. In this case, we can see right here, we have the algorithm RS256. We have the type. So this is JSON web token and we we have the status of success. We have data like ID, username, email, password. This gets interesting. We have the password view here. What is this? What exactly is going on here? So here we have a password view. And again, this looks like some gibberish text, some gibberish data. So what we can do now is to try to think about what are the web servers? What are the web application systems? What are they doing when it comes to storing password views? At the same time, they could be using a very simple method in order to store all these passwords. So instead of just directly, directly saving the password as a plain text, what they would do is that they would use some kind of hashing technique that would then save those passwords into the backend database so that whoever has access to it will not be able to see the actual password. So all I got to do now is try to identify what kind of hashing matter are they using? So this is again, a really important method for us to identify what's going on. So I can use hash dash identifier. Okay, hit enter on this and I can paste the hash that we just copied over. So paste selection and hit enter on this and I can scroll up a little more and we can see here possible hash, all right, MD5 all domain cache credentials. So what we can do now is just go into and we search for a way for us to look for MD5 decoder or MD5 rainbow table. All right. So what happens is that we have the rainbow table and what the hackers normally do is that they will use all those commonly used passwords, throw them into the same algorithm or the same hashing algorithm, and that will produce the unique value that we just saw earlier so that we will be able to find out the actual password. So I go to this website called crackstation.net and I'll paste it right here. Okay. So this is the, and go to the right side, click on I'm not a robot and click crack hashes. Okay. And you see right here, all right, we got a following hash and we got a result as admin. So the password is admin. So let's go back to the website, go back to OWSP Juice Shop, click on our account, click log out. And what I'll do now is click login. So right now, without the SQL injection, I can enter email and the password is admin, click login. And likewise, we got the same result. As quickly as that, we managed to find out the username 
right? We found a vulnerability in a login view. And of course, we found the password. So we were able to reverse it. And by the way, you can also go into your browser, check what kind of tokens have been stored inside your browser. And then after which, and go back to Burp Suite and decode those JSON web tokens. Let me know what you find on the comment section. So once again, I hope you learned something valuable in today's tutorial. If you like what you watch, remember like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you can be kept abreast of the latest cybersecurity tutorial. Thank you so much once again for watching.